Hey guys, Ern here. How's it going? It's been a bit, I know. What am I doing? What is that? What is this? It's my dog's toy. It's been a bit, I know. Uh, life's just been busy. A lot of uh, stuff going on personally, with the family, a lot of stuff with work. Uh, and I just honestly have not really had the motivation to record and honestly haven't had the time to just sit down and just enjoy and uh you know talk to a camera and enjoy the cards and do all that stuff so today um you know i figured i need i needed an outlet i have some stuff to open i have some stuff to sell i have some stuff to take care of um i figured i would open up this package from japan i don't think there's actually anything too spectacular in here um yeah just for, for <laughs> fair warning you're not going to be blown away, I think. Uh, most of the stuff in here is just stuff I'm reselling. Um, speaking of reselling and the cards business, I've honestly really slowed down in the last month, month and a half. Um, you know, uh, just a lot going on. Um, real quick, this this video is going to serve two purposes. One, there's been a lot of scams on Mercari slash Bayi recently. And so one of their processes for, uh, you know, asking you to submit proof is you need to show oops i want to show that you opening everything and giving them video proof and then just showing them that um what you opened was not legit so i'm actually going to they can see uh, and then we're gonna be on our way um yeah the cards business has been slowing down i just haven't been listing um I've been busy, man. Um, it's hard. It's hard to keep up on the daily grind with, you know, cards and listing and buying and sorting and selling. And so I've kind of slowed down. Um, I'm still doing really well for the year, so I'm not really worried about that. Uh, but, you know, that's that's just the name of the game. Sometimes life gets in the way, and, you know, this is a hobby for me. I think I mentioned that before. Uh, I do this for fun. I do this for the enjoyment of the hobby and collecting and, um, you know, just having something to do in my free time. So I'm not really pressured by making ends meet and trying to drive a profit every week, every month, uh, which is what I like. So let's see, this is a 10. One of the bad things about not having the time and keeping up is you spend time, the market adapts, prices go up, prices go down. And then you end up in a position like me where, you know, all the potential margin that you expected uh, is gone. So that's kind of what happened here. All of the stuff I bought for resale. Ooh, actually, this is not for resale. This is this is a total impulse purchase. Um, I'm going to resell it, but it's impulse purchase because this is a card that I've always wanted to see in person and have and feel. Uh, it is Graded by ARS, which is a Japanese grading company, whatever. Um, it'll be part of the resale. Oh, man, they damaged this. This is a certificate. And if you can't read Japanese, don't worry. I will I will figure this out for you. That's a cool seal. Put that over there. This is a Mew from Southern Islands in an ARS 10. Now, ARS is not very well known. It's, again, a Japanese-based grading company. Um, but the thing I love about what they do is they have fantastic slabs they just look so cool and i wish other companies ugh, would do the same thing so they do not grade based on centering which is why some people don't like them they just made grade purely on the um, condition of the card so this card got an ars 10 which um you know it's probably a I don't know. It probably will not pass for PSA 10. But condition-wise, yeah, there's like some fingerprints or something down there. It's actually pretty good. It's definitely a 9. Um, it would get a 10 if they just didn't care about the centering. I got this because I really want to see it. Um, and I think I can probably flip it. But uh, it's a gorgeous card. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. Definitely, definitely, definitely an impulse purchase. Do not recommend buying ARS cards unless you really, really like them. Um, yeah, arbitrage, timing. If you don't keep up with the hobby, you're going to get smoked. You're going to get burned. Uh, that's exactly what happened to me. 
a lot of the stuff that I've purchased, I think in this lot and then the next lot and then the next lot, um, I just wasn't able to keep on top of it. And the market has shifted a lot. Japanese stuff is starting to go down. Um, honestly, it's, it's changing fairly rapidly week over week. Um, and especially with, you know, a lot of focus on 151 and the massive reprints it's getting, um, you're not seeing as much uh, on the Japanese slab fronts uh, for all-time highs for, for certain cards. So, uh, sorry, that was a really poor way of saying the prices are going down. Anyway, um, so I got a bunch of these Umbreons, which at the time I bought those, that was like a month ago. Uh, they were doing really well, and they were on an upward trajectory. And I tried to ride that wave, and I'm two weeks behind because, again, life. And I got, I'm getting smoked. So that's that's what happens. Um, I'll make a little bit. That's fine. But given the time, energy, effort, um, you know, was it worth it? Was it not worth it? We'll see. I think this is a Charizard SAR. These cards, by the way, are getting... What is this? Oh, actually, Umbreon set. So these Umbreons, I, I really dig. I think they're actually... should be um i'll probably grade them if they're not they're not tens if they might have print lines on them which, which can't be seen then i will just sell them raw or we'll see um but i'm pretty cheap so figured it'd be nice to add to the store uh now some for some stuff that is not as interesting but this is a key part of you know my business right now which is selling a lot of japanese bulk um Japanese bulk, I don't have much to say, but if you understand bulk, you understand who buys it, and you understand uh, who would pay for it, and you have people who would actually pay for it. That's a key part of it. Um, this kind of stuff is not bad. Not bad to get. It's boring. Uh, don't get me wrong. It is not fun. Uh, but uh, I guess it depends how you, how you define fun, because some people think making having fun is making money, which I understand. Other people uh, <laughs> would say... There's, it's just not interesting, and I understand that as well. Okay, what? Why did they fold this? Why did they fold this? Why did they fold this? Okay. So yeah, life's been busy. Uh, I went to an event for Grand Archive. It's another card game that I collect. Um, what can I tell you about it? It's an anime-based card game for the Western audience. Let me see if I have some trophies I can show. <laughs> And here's one of them. I'll just show this. Waifu alert. I'm not really a fan of the art, but this is Morgan, my second place trophy that I got. Here's some other signature cards that are serialized. So each of these cards is actually serialized 1, 11 through 70. And it's from the first edition set, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I went to a tournament, got sixth in the collector's tournament. Um, so it's a pretty cool format. You know, if you're a collector, you can go, you submit cards for different points, and uh, that's the competition aspect. And if you win, you get a trophy. I got the trophy for sixth place, which is just fine. You know, I think I would have loved to get a higher place, but given the, the format uh, and how they were running, you know, some of the uh, tiebreakers, that's the, that's the best I could do. Uh, I immediately sold that trophy, and, you know, it, it made... Selling it totally made that trip worth my time, energy, effort. Got to see a bunch of friends, and um, why? And yeah, it was a blast. So that's actually around the time, probably a week or two before then. This is a nine. You're gonna go to someone, probably at the next show. Um, a week or two before that event, which was two or three weeks ago. I was preparing for that event, and that's really when things started to slow down on the, on the Pokemon front. I don't have that much time. I don't have unlimited amounts of time, even with the, the kid and family and all this stuff. And, you know, work's been really tough for me. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I decided to spend all my time on, on Grand Archive and not, not uh, Pokemon. Um, yeah, I've I've been into Grand Archive for a while now, since the game first came out. A buddy of mine works on it, and so I back the game and Kickstarter. I support them by buying every single set um, that comes out. Um, yeah, I, I mainly just collect it. I don't play because I don't have the time, but uh, it's a great game. I s you saw the front of this, and now you see the back. 
So, this is a Lugia Legend set, and oh no, that's a 9. I didn't actually see if this could go for a 10. Um, it probably... You know, it's kind of a bummer. I see a little something here. If you submit these two together, and the grader's like, oh, this, this guy clearly wants these to be graded together, and you get a 9 on one, that must be a terrible feeling. For the grader and also for the person who submitted it. I've done that before. The reason why I got these is because I have um, another set, a 10 and a 9. And I'm going to match those together. Uh, granted, we're going to break up the sequential search, but that's whatever. Uh, pair the 10 together, pair the 9 together. I'm going to sell them um, as one piece. And so I was made whole um, at a really good deal for both of these. Um, so all is not lost with... Uh, with Lugia. I would say that's probably one of the my more favorite legend cards. Those cards don't really go for much. Um, sorry, I shouldn't say that. They do not they go for way less than you would expect. Um, I think the Lugia in a 10 in English goes for like more than a thousand for both of them. In Japanese, I think it goes for like six or seven hundred. So um, you would think it goes for more considering that they are considered the top hits in the set. Um, but you know it uh, it is what it is. Let's open this bad boy. Uh, I got a topic today that I kind of want to talk about, but I figured I'd... This is going to be a longer conversation that's going to come up later down the road, but something I've been really thinking about. It's just been really bothering the crap out of me. Like this... This thing. And... You know, I, I call it hedging your bets. And what does hedging your bets mean? It means... Reducing the risk of the decisions that you make so that you get the highest possible outcome per amount of risk taken. So, for example, um, if I buy this card and I can see I can get it for $100. Actually, that's a terrible example. I should probably think about an example before I start rambling on. Um I'll use a coin flip analogy. If you had a coin and it was flipped five times, do you want to bet that it's going to be heads five times in a row for potentially higher payout, so $100? Or do you want to bet that it's going to have heads three times in a row for a way for, for less payout, like $50? That's a poor example. I totally just made it up. But the point is, I think... Hedging your bets is really important, especially right now in the market, because one, Japanese stuff is not is not pumping as much as it was before the 151 reprint. A lot of cards are dropping rapidly, and when you pair that together with the Japanese yen, which is also not doing well, uh, a lot of cards that you've purchased, that I've purchased, they're not doing as well as you would expect. And so um, I think when people want to talk about the... Uh, the golden term investing, cringe, half cringe. Um, the challenge in investing is that everyone thinks that everything's going to go up over time. You're always going to make money. And when you take the thousand foot view and you zoom out, if you look at the last 20 years in sealed product, for example, and a lot of guys in the YouTube community talk about this, so it's not anything new. Sure, you would have probably made some money and done better than the stock market. Oh, God, cringe. I can't believe I said that. Um, sure. That, that, that would have been true. However, nobody did that. Nobody's buying booster box and booster box, set after set, sitting on it for the last 20 years and hoping to make money. Um, so, you know, hedging your bets for me, what does that mean? I usually show, in most cases, what I've purchased for resale. I'll use this card, for example. It's not any, not of a surprise. I love this card. Uh, mainly because I've made money from it. I don't actually like Giratina. I think it's kind of a weird, gross Pokemon. I purchased this for the intent to resale. Four to six weeks ago, I was I was acquiring these. And I have a particular margin of mine with everything that I buy. Um, but fast forward to today, that card is now worth what I paid for it. So when I resell it, uh, maybe actually a little bit more, when I start to resell it, 
given the time, energy, effort it took to source, get it shipped, get it listed, get it sold, all that stuff, it might not actually be worth buying or selling. And why does hedging, what does hedging your bets mean? And how does it come into play here? Uh, I only bought a couple. So I could have easily purchased like 10 or 20 of them and tried to go full speed ahead into uh, into selling Giratinas. But the market wouldn't have absorbed it. And the timing, honestly, I couldn't have predicted that, uh, you know, it wouldn't have played out in my favor. So now I'm left with this card, which I see a lot of people trying to resell. Um, and it's not going for as much. And so I'm glad I did not invest more into it than I did uh, because I would be not in good shape. So this, I'm really confused at this card because I got it incredibly cheap. Incredibly cheap. I think it was like 30 bucks. This is a $100 card, I think, or $80 card. And so I'm curious, did the seller damage it and not list it? Or did they just post it and whatever, I'll take it. 25th anniversary Japanese cards, I think, are some of my favorite, uh, especially the Zard, Umbreon. Beautiful, beautiful card. Okay, so where were we? Hedging your bets, stonking, investing. Uh, it's so tiring to think about. Uh, oh, God. Okay. This is not fun. If you're buying right now in the market, this is not my advice. This is just me talking. You got to realize, in order to make money, someone else has to pay you money. Duh, right? Obvious. I think people expect their purchases to go up. I don't think there's anyone out there who spends thousands of dollars on cards who would like their, <laughs> their purchases to go down in value over time, whether that's today, tomorrow, years from now. That's just not how it works. If you're talking to a kid or a teenager or someone who, you know, is receiving cards as a gift, they're probably not going to care as much, right? But any adult who's spending money on cards, um, they more than likely do not <laughs> want to be in a position where the thing I just bought dropped 50% and it's always going to be low. So, you know, when you purchase this stuff, people expect it to go up. Okay, that makes sense. However, not everything goes up. And the other part of that is when things do go up, it doesn't mean they're going to stay up forever. It doesn't mean there's always a buyer at every price that goes, that is past 100, 200, 300, 400. And I don't think people realize that is you have to liquidate the things that you buy. You have to find a buyer. And I have a, I have a story about this. Sorry, put that away. I don't even know what I'm looking at right now. What is this stuff? Only me. Would I buy stuff that I have no idea what it is? Okay, this is like mid-era bulk but i don't remember buying this see cards are a dangerous hobby diamond and pearl bulk did i buy thousands of bulk i think this is a hollow lot that had a bunch of non-foils in it non-hollows what is going on i have a story and this happened to me last summer. Um, I would pull the data point on TCG Player, but I'll just flash the uh, the sold order, which is right here, 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 here. That's my my reminder to show it on the screen. A thousand bucks, Ancient Origins booster box I sold on TCG Player. I bought that thing 2020, 2021, at a time where I was just mass acquiring and just buying stuff left and right. This is definitely bulk from mid-era. If you want to buy bulk from mid-era, let me know. Um, I was acquiring and acquiring, and I got this booster box, Ancient Origins. I held on to this thing for years, up until last summer, at which point I decided to get rid of it and sell it. I, with no exaggeration, it took me about... 45 days to sell that booster box and it took me so long even as i here we go was low listing posting on facebook groups posting on discord groups posting on ebay and 
anti-CG player. I posted this thing literally everywhere for 10, if not 15% lowest listing on those platforms. And it took about 45 days. Um, this is more EX bulk. Ooh. And I share that because it was a booster box I bought at like 400. It went up to 1,000. Yippee, yay, whatever. I couldn't find a buyer. And I started to get really stressed out. Like, I have this thing. It's gone up in value. It's a thousand bucks. Why isn't anyone buying it? Isn't this like a really hot ticket item? Isn't this like an important set? Like, it's Rayquaza. You know, it's, it's you know, X and Y. Like, it, it was, to me, I, I didn't understand why nobody was buying this amazing booster box that I had that was worth a thousand dollars that had pumped from $400 over the last few years. And then that, that's when I started to realize like, Oh, I'm not really understanding this liquidity thing well enough. Liquidity is entirely based off of demand. And if there's not demand for the thing that you have, or if there's not enough demand, Ooh, if there's not enough demand, then it's going to be really hard for you to sell. Obviously. Uh, and there, the thing is, there's not unlimited buyers. I don't think people understand that. Like, Evolving Skies was at four hundred dollars a booster box for a while. It didn't break four fifty for a while. It stayed stagnant. It dipped lower, and then it started to take off again. Um, it's not because you know the market decided. You know what? This is what it's worth for now. Like, we're not willing to pay. It's just because there's not that many buyers, and like, all it takes is a few buyers, obviously, to get those price points to go up, but. That's only a few buyers. So if you have thousands of dollars in sealed product and stuff that everyone else is. So that lot was a um, Diamond and Pearl Hollow lot that I bought. So whatever. And here's more bulk. So unfortunately, this is not going to be that interesting. There's got to be buyers. And many people now who are investing, I'm going to go out on a whim and say most people who invest have not actually sold anything. You're in for, you're in for a world of hurt when you realize trying to sell some of this stuff at $200, $300, $400, $500 price points, there's not a limited amount of people who buy at, that, at those price points. This is not like uh, a stock. This is not like something that always has demand. TCG player literally has shows you data points people are willing to pay on that platform and it's five, ten, dozens of, of price points for the millions of people that are in this hobby and for the thousands of people who have the same products who are trying to flip it and, and make long-term uh, long term flips and make gains. So, you know, anyway, this video is supposed to be about hedging your bets and Going back to that, parking your money in this stuff, right? Unless you have a bunch of money that you don't care about. I'm not saying I do, but I've kind of just accepted they're, they're going to sit there for a while. That's fine if you do that. But unless you have that, you're literally just sitting on something that could take forever to, to appreciate. It could take months. Probably evolve. Well, it's been a year. It's like 130 now. Not bad. I think a lot of people saw that coming. Um, could take two years, could take three years, could take four years. I have no idea. I haven't been around this cycle. I haven't been around a four or five year cycle since COVID. So any anyone who's done it longer than, than that knows better. I only had that perspective the last few years. Um, and I can tell you that once you start getting to two, three, four hundred dollar marks, the number of buyers drops off a cliff. There's not that many people who are willing to spend $250 on Chill and Rain. There are people who will buy it, but there are infinitely way more people who are holding it and trying to make that money uh, from from the buyers. So you got to compete with all of them. So, uh, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, dude, my gosh. This guy just literally threw... No, so some of these, I guess they buy them with sleeves on, but I literally had to unsleeve like a thousand of these in a different lot, and it 
really made my brain hurt. Um, sorry, I'm totally losing track. Side note, clay burst is real cheap. Uh, unfortunately, the trainer trainer trend is dying. It's not doing well. So, buy your own risk. I buy nine or ten, like I did. I opened up nine of them, or I opened up one of them. I had eleven. I opened up one. Um, are you willing to have that just sit there and literally do nothing? Because it could be forever for it to go up in value. And you know, I get I often get asked, "Do I invest in this stuff?" Look. The term investing is so cliche where my background or what I'm used to is like investing into your portfolio of stocks, index fund, mutual, like whatever you want to, whatever you want to say, right? Having a 401k, that's investing. Uh, investing in real estate, that's investing. Parking money in a collectible like this and hoping for it to go up and calling it an investment when you have no other means of making money or no other way of of having long-term growth in your, as part of your portfolio, that's where I'm just kind of like, yo, man, you guys who are doing this, you're literally playing with fire. I hope you don't get burned, but be careful. Um, this is fake. I'm going to look this shirt up. It's not. I'm part paranoid. This just looks kind of weird. Be careful because all these people who are giving you advice, look, the challenge is anyone can give anyone advice in this hobby. But when people are wrong, no one's going to take accountability for your money and your cards and your the time you spend and the money you spend and all that stuff. That's got to be you. So you can listen to all these guys and honestly, a lot of the advice... If you want to pay me a hundred bucks a month for my secret advice as someone who collects this hobby, please, I will give you all the advice in the world. But the advice that you see online, honestly, is not rocket science. It is a lot of it's herd mentality. Like you don't need someone to tell you that trainer galleries are probably going to be worthwhile one day. And in fact, if someone's saying, you know, trainer galleries are worth worth buying one day, they've already probably bought it. And so you're <laughs> you're essentially helping them make money before you help yourself. Anyway. Um, this card has dropped a lot. I'm kind of ranting and rambling. Just know there's nothing special about what a lot of people are telling you in this hobby. The YouTubers, the creators, all these people, none of them have special information. All of them are guessing with what is publicly available to all of us. And just remember, if you follow them and there's a thousand people doing the same play, that means you have a thousand competitors working against you for the for when it is the time for you to want to make money. And I think that's that's uh, something that people don't realize. I don't like sharing some of the stuff that I do for long term, even though it's kind of obvious, because we're all competing. And yes, the hobby is big, but when you start talking about hundred, two, three, four, you know, the list goes on and on. Price points and graded slabs and sealed product. The hobby is not that big. There are not thousands of people buying, you know, a thousand dollar booster box. There are not thousands of people doing that, right? The buyer pool shrinks dramatically. The more in value or the cost that you go, that you go up. Keep that in mind. Uh, it is when I hear, when I hear people say the hobby's big and there's room for everyone, I kind of just scratch my head because. Unless you sold stuff that is more expensive, you know there are there are ballers out there, right? In every state, in every show, you know there are people out there with with deep pockets. There are people out there who want like an Umbreon and and all that stuff, but there are not tens of thousands of people. They are a handful of people who go to your local card show. They are, you know. Handful of people who go to Collecticon who who have tens of thousands of dollars to buy stuff. It's not everyone. So hedge your bets. Buy a little bit here, buy a little bit there. Flipping is is the superior way, I would say, to uh, make money in the hobby. 
parking your money in sealed product, honestly. I've gotten incredibly lucky, don't get me wrong. Um, but it is, it is a s slow and snail's pace of a way to, uh, to make money. Uh, this person just wrapped it up like, thank you. There's a lot, there's way more faster, there's faster ways, sorry, I'm just like, ugh, dry mouth, I'm talking too much. There are many ways to double and triple your money in this hobby. And you can do it in a very quick amount of time. And it is not through holding sealed product. If you want to wait, spend five, ten years, many years, whatever it is, just have it in your shelf. Which, by the way, good luck just keeping it on your shelf and not thinking about it. I've tried to do that. It's very hard. The number of EV Heroes boxes I've opened because they've just been sitting there has been way more than I uh, have hoped would have would have liked. So unless you're willing to wait and you really don't care about your money, sure, buy sealed. You can't really go wrong. I'm really sad that these are just crashing in price. But I'm happy that 151 is getting a big reprint. Um, yeah, I think that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I got a couple more packages coming in. Got to do some sorting for the next show uh, in about a month. Um, yeah, got some other things to take care of. Uh, thanks again for watching. Um, hopefully I'll, I'll continue to upload regularly. Hit me up on my, on IG if you need anything. And if not, uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.